So the horizon coordinates, altitude and azimuth, it's great for explaining what direction to face and how high up to look. But the problem is they're unique to the individual observer. They're unique to the spot that you're observing from, and they're unique to the time that you're observing. And so it would be really nice to imagine some way of, of mapping the sky that doesn't change, some kind of coordinates in the sky that don't change. Because you want to say where something is. So I, I want to tell you where a comet is. I want to give those coordinates relative to something else that you can actually measure in the sky. So we need some sort of celestial coordinates. And so the way we do that is we start off by imagining that you know, all the stars are out there, so so we can start off by imagining that the stars are all going to be roughly the same distance away from us, and imagine a big sphere surrounding Earth. So Earth's sitting here turning inside this big celestial sphere, and we want to put coordinates on that celestial sphere. So how do we do that? Well, think about it and say, well, we don't normally um, re imagine the Earth spinning, so we normally, on the other hand, you know, we talk, we think about the sky moving. The sky is not really moving; it's the Earth that's turning. Okay, uh, but imagine instead the Earth is sitting still and the sky is rotating around the Earth. I mean, our language is based on that. We talk about the sunrise, the sunset. Really, the sun's not rising, Earth rotating towards the sun. The sun doesn't set, Earth rotates away from it So we, as we ride around the Earth. And so that's, that's really what's going on. So we want to have coordinates as if the sky is this big sphere surrounding the Earth with coordinates on it. What can we think of that's a big spinning thing with coordinates? Earth. Earth is a big spinning thing. Earth is a big spinning thing. It has coordinates. And so the coordinates on Earth are longitude that run from pole to pole and latitude that runs this way. Okay. So we can imagine the sky being the same way with like celestial latitude and celestial longitude. Okay. So referring to how we do this on Earth, latitude. As the Earth spins, then as it spins, then we can find the center is. And it doesn't matter really, you know, uh, uh, anything here spinning. As it spins, you can figure out as it's spinning, where's the axis around where it's spinning and where's the midpoint. That midpoint's going to be the equator. That's going to be the zero latitude. And then you measure north and south of that. 90 degrees north is the North Pole, 90 degrees south is the South Pole. So that's how latitude is measured. So the equator is zero. Longitude. As our spins, we get longitude, so we have a zero, okay, and then we measure east and west of that. Okay, so that's, well, why, how does that work? You know, cause where's the zero? It's the prime meridian, but why, what's so prime about the prime meridian? Well, remember I said that the way that, that horizon coordinates work, where something is in the sky depends on when it is and where you are. So what's overhead depends on where you are. So if you go, for example, to Atlanta, then things are going to be overhead earlier than they are in Jackson, Mississippi. And in Jackson, Mississippi, it's going to be overhead earlier than it is in Dallas, Fort Worth. And in Dallas, Fort Worth, it's going to be overhead earlier than it is in El Paso. In El Paso, it's going to be overhead earlier than in Phoenix, uh, Arizona. So the farther west you are, the farther the Earth has to turn until something's overhead. And so... So you can calculate that. So latitude is pretty easy uh, uh, because as you go out and look in, uh, here in the sky, you can see, okay, you know, latitude, look on the earth. You, we got the equator. We go north. We go south. Okay. And so that's pretty easy. What about the zero? Remember? Okay. As earth spins, if you look at the uh, diagram up here, as Earth is spinning, 
What's directly overhead of the equator is always the same spot in the sky. Well, it's not the same spot, but it's the same, same latitude in the sky all the way around there. That's the celestial equator. But, uh, for example, if you happen to be in Texas and you look straight up right here, then straight overhead it's going to be a spot in the sky that's a certain number of degrees above the Earth's equator because Texas is above the Earth's equator. Remember, the Earth, there's, Earth is spherical. And so the farther north you go, the farther north in the sky something looks. So if you're at the north pole of the Earth, you look straight up. As Earth rotates, you always see the same thing overhead. That's like a celestial north pole. At the equator, uh, uh, you see you know, right in the middle here of the sky. At the south pole, you look up, and, and, and as, it's, as the Earth turns, you always have the same thing overhead. So that's the celestial south pole. And so at Texas, you always see the same same spot in the sky that's so many degrees above the celestial midpoint of the celestial equator. But where along there depends on your what time it is. Because at Earth turns, you see something at different times. Okay, so these concepts are now going to play in with how we discover or how we discuss celestial coordinates. Because we're going to refer to the celestial coordinates as very similar to terrestrial coordinates. The terrestrial coordinates are latitude and longitude. So uh, we're going to have in the celestial sphere these things, these lines, the celestial equator across the middle, and then we're going to have celestial latitude. <clears throat> we don't call it latitude. We call it declination. So... <laughs> Texas, you know, here, here are the uh, 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 Dallas-Fort Worth area, 32 to 33 degrees north. And so that means that what's overhead is 32 to 33 degrees north of the celestial equator. Yeah, and so you go up to like New York or someplace, and what's overhead is 45 degrees north of the celestial equator. At the North Pole, it's the celestial North Pole. Okay, so it looks like, you know, this is all going around. Now, right ascension is like longitude. So the right ascension here is going to be like longitude, and so the right ascension lines run from pole to pole. Okay, and so that, that's how they're measured. Okay, and so, so uh, it's just like longitude. Okay. The big difference between uh, latitude and longitude is latitude is measured in degrees north and south of the equator. Declination is also degrees north and south of the equator, but we don't call it north and south of the equator. We call it plus and minus. Plus means north, minus means south. Remember the star in the BD catalog, BD plus so many degrees? That was the declination at which the telescope was pointed in the sky. And then you pick a starting point and you count around. Okay. And so the CD, which is the southern hemisphere, was CD was minus something degrees. And that's because it was pointing south. So positive right ascension is facing, uh, it's heading north. Negative, uh, sorry, not, positive declination is going north. Negative declination is going south. Now, the equivalent of longitude is right ascension. Now, here's where it's different. In longitude, we measure degrees east and west of the prime meridian. In space, because the entire, you know, because as Earth rotates, the entire sky goes around, we just pick a starting point and measure in one direction. So we don't do east and west, we just measure in one direction. We measure towards the east, because as Earth rotates towards the east, things are rising in the east. And so you see what's further and further to the east. Okay. The big difference is we measure it in hours, minutes, and seconds, not in degrees. Now that's really weird. Because if you had a star up here and a star here, you would say that, that this star is going to be maybe 30 degrees north of that star. But if you had stars that are east and west, then you would say that this star over here and this star over here, from that spot, this star is, is going to be two hours earlier than the other star.
So why would you measure east and west in hours? Well, because Earth rotates. And as Earth turns, that star is going to be overhead two hours before that star. Okay, Earth rotates 360 degrees in uh, 24 hours. I'll, I'll, I'll modify that statement slightly. Okay, but 360 degrees in, in 24 hours, so that's 15 degrees per hour. Okay, so every hour the, the Earth rotates 15 degrees. Well, that means that every four minutes it goes one degree. Now, if you want to know your latitude and longitude on Earth, then what you could do is you could pick, find a star in the sky and figure out you know, what star is directly overhead. That would tell you your latitude because your latitude is going to equal the declination, okay, you know, within rounding error. I mean, there are, there are footnotes here. Okay, so but your latitude should be equal to your declination to the declination of the star that's overhead. But when that star is overhead depends on where you are on Earth longitude-wise. So who calculates that? Well, astronomers. Uh, so at Royal Observatory, that's really what the Royal Observatory was originally designed for. Was it was designed to make these kind of measurements uh, uh, for navigation purposes. They would say that a certain star is going to be over on the, on the meridian at a certain time. And so uh, if it's early, then that means you are east of that meridian. If it's late, you are west of that meridian. So if it's two hours early, the, the, the star is overhead, you're 30 degrees east. If it's five hours later, that means you're 75 degrees to the west. Okay, and so that's the uh, that's how that works. Well, uh, that's why right ascension and is measured in hours, minutes, and seconds because you measure the time difference here. And then knowing that that the relationship that one hour of right ascension is 15 degrees, one minute of, of, of right ascension or one minute of time is going to be one quarter of a degree and you can work down to the seconds as to, you know, fractions there, that lets you do longitude. And so uh, uh, that's why it's done this way. It was, it was not just to confuse students. Uh, but that also brings up an interesting point, and that is that makes the prime meridian simply the place where the observatory is located. And so the maps that we use measure east and west of the Royal Observatory, and the Royal Observatory is at Greenwich, England. Okay. Well, the French used to measure east and west of a, uh, an observatory near Paris. Uh, the Royal Observatory was actually funded by the British Admiralty to make navigation of ships done. The Americans, uh, shortly after the Revolutionary War, uh, measured east and west of, of a small observatory in Pennsylvania. And then eventually they built a U.S. Naval Observatory in the new capital, uh, the District of Columbia. And so the U.S. Naval Observatory is still there, and, and that's what they used to measure east and west of. In fact, if you go back to Civil War and look at the maps that were used at that time in the Civil War and afterwards, uh, e even in the uh, later uh, 1800s, the longitudes look like they're all wrong because they're all measured east and west of the U.S. Naval Observatory in Washington, D.C., not east and west of the Prime Meridian. And so, so the question is, so why does the world today use the British way? And well, that's because the British Navy ruled the seas. So we do things the British way. But this is the essence as to how right ascension and declination came about and why they are the way they are and how they relate to navigation and latitude and longitude on Earth.